insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 160, Perspectives on Parenting, Top Challenges. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen, for this episode. Hello, Madison. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? I am awesome. Nice. So, definitely a new setup already, but not only that... But we also have a special guest joining us for this podcast, my mom, also one of the possible hosts of Insights and Entertainment. You know, we're still we're still working on that. Uh, but uh, my mom, uh, Michelle Whalen. Yes, I'm not Madison. <laughs> Sorry. So that's who you were named after. <laughs> anyway, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I am good. So... Bit of an interesting setup we've got today. Me hosting, special guest. Also, uh, 160th episode. Let's go. Yeah, let's Woo! do it. Woo-hoo! All right. So, um, we figured that for our 10th episode. Now, just for a bit of context, this was technically my idea. The idea of basically, despite the fact that we mo- mainly focus with teen issues. I think you'd want to focus on parent issues as well to have, you know, an equal uh, playing field. Okay. So we mostly address issues teens deal with on this podcast, but there are challenges to parenting that are worth taking a look at as well. Our perspectives on parenting topics are aimed at looking at these issues to help teens understand some of the difficulties parents face to hopefully put things on a more even playing field. Today's Perspectives on Parenting will look at some of the top challenges of parenting today. But before we do that, we have a few uh, show plugs. So you can find uh, audio versions listed under Insights into Teens. You can also find video and audio versions listed under Insights into Things. I'd also like you to... I'm bad at this, don't mind me. Uh... I'd also like to invite you to give us your feedback on what we're talking about or give us your suggestions for show topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com or links to all of our social medias, websites, and much... Well, not websites because we only have one, but links to all our social medias and more on our website at insightsintothings.com. Now with the fact that I pretty much butchered our show plugs, are we ready to begin? I think we're ready. Let's do it. Alright, so, uh, we're gonna, st- basically this is gonna be kind of a and a for you guys. I came up with questions based on challenges that you've picked out for us, Daddy. So, uh, the first segment we're gonna be focusing on the basics. And, uh, these, uh, questions are gonna be focusing on providing basic care for your child. So the first question I have for you both uh, is, do you believe that parenting just comes down to providing the basic necessities? And who's answering first? Uh, I guess you can answer first. Well, okay, I guess I will. Um, no, I mean, obviously, uh, the basic necessities of, you know, food on the table, a roof over your head, uh, that type of stuff is, is kind of a requirement legally. Um <laughs> We kind of have to do that for you, but parenting is much more than that. And and parenting is is, you know, it's nurturing, it's growing, it's teaching, it's mentoring, it's it's a lot of different things. Mommy, 
Yeah, it, it's definitely um, a lot of, of different things. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, there are people that, you know, don't have a suitable roof over their head or have enough, you know, food to eat, unfortunately, but yet have the love and care of and support of, of their parents. So it, it's, you know, in a perfect society, you have everything, but there are people that that are, are missing on certain aspects and kind of make up for it in, in other respects. All right, I think those are some solid answers. Uh, next is, do you find it more or less difficult to provide for your family than just yourself? Sure, I'll go first. It's good if you direct traffic. Though. Okay, sorry. So, um... <sighs> I don't know if it's more difficult um, because I think regardless of, of I was by myself or if I had a family, I, I'd still have the same needs, the same income, the same requirements. Um, I think where it, it makes a difference is the sense of responsibility. You know, it's one thing to have to take care of myself it's a whole nother thing to know I've got a family I have to take care of. Um, I've got your individual needs that have to be taken into consideration. It's a much bigger lift, I'll say, much bigger responsibility that you're worrying about where you're not just worrying about yourself. You're not, you're not self-centered at that point in time. You have to worry about other people. And that comes with its own rewards as well. It's not it's not a, a burden or, or dragging it down or anything, but it's a bigger perspective, I think, on life. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, again, not every parent, you know, does everything to the full 100% that, you know, that they can because of limitations on, on different things. And I think... You know, if a parent is is giving as much of themselves as they can and they're doing the best that they can, then hopefully, you know, their their, uh, you know, the family dynamic and everything is 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 functioning. Um, you know, there are some people who have, you know, tons of money but they don't do anything with their kids. And then there are people that don't have a lot of money, but yet find a way to, to do things and, and be with their kids and, and do things. So it's kind of, you know, doesn't really matter what your economic standing is. You could, you know, have the best economic standing and be the worst parent out there or be on you know the low end of things but be the best parent so it's it's you know it kind of can can go all over the place really uh next up have there been any have there been sacrifices you've had to make for your family if so what were they mommy why don't we go with you first well there's that blood altar in the backyard there <laughs> Shh, we don't talk about that. Um, and the chickens, but no. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if I... You know, I I probably made some sort of, of sacrifice in terms of, um, you know, not knowingly doing it, um, but, you know, pursuing my career and trying to, you know, get ahead, um, knowing that I had a family at home. Um, you know, I, I guess I was willing to only work so many hours a day, so many hours a week, so that I still had family time. So I guess in some cases, you know, some sacrifices, you know, but I don't really think that I, I made any. Uh, I don't think there was ever an opportunity that, that came forward, you know, in my career where it said, oh, well, if you came and worked on weekends, you'd get promoted. Nothing like that ever came to me, but I'm sure if I tried, you know, there might have been something if I had wanted something a little bit more, 
I would have had to sacrifice something else and I wasn't willing to you know to sacrifice that that family time I think I'm kind of in the same boat um I don't I don't see them as sacrifices I think there were different choices had I not wanted to have family time had I not wanted to spend I'm I'm the type of person who there's a very clear delineation between personal life and professional life and I've always maintained that and there are there were instances in which had I let the professional life bleed into my personal life more I probably would have had different career choices I probably would have had more opportunities but I don't think I lost anything there was an opportunity at one point in time for me to travel more for work and I was never big on traveling, so it wasn't a sacrifice. It was a choice I made that that wasn't what I wanted to do, but it would have taken me away from the family more. So I don't think I, I've made sacrifices. I think I've made choices because of the family that had I not had the family, I would have gone down a different path. Um, so certainly no regrets on my part. All right, that's good. I'm glad I uh, I don't give you guys any regrets or make you think you had to sacrifice <laughs> stuff other than, you know, the chickens, but we got that. Right. Uh, the next question I have is, does the, does the support of your family make it possible, make it, make up for any possible drawbacks needed to provide for them? Mommy? Well, if you guys would, like, empty and load the dishwasher a little bit more, I mean, I'd I did, appreciate it. I did that Monday. I know. You did it Monday. <laughs> I've done it before. I, I did I get that busy. once back in 2018. I, I'm right. busy. I, okay. I'm just saying there are certain things where I shouldn't have to ask. I shouldn't have to beg. It should be, hey, you know, that sink looks a little full. Maybe I should help out. Hey, would you like some help with something? That's really more of what I was, you know, okay. going I think we'll just move on to the next part. <laughs> it's safer that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question is, have you ever had any issues trying to, quote unquote, put bread on the table? Daddy? Um, <clears throat> not recently. We've been very fortunate with that. Uh, there have been a couple of times that I've been between jobs. Uh, there was a period that I was working as a consultant and you didn't know if I was going to go to work the next day. Um, it never got to the point where we couldn't pay our bills, but it was one of those things where other plans were kind of in limbo. You know, like we couldn't plan a vacation. We couldn't, I didn't know what Christmas was going to be like the one year. Um, so it's never been to the point, like, like, I grew up in a family that every week we didn't know if we were going to put bread on the table. You know, I, I knew what it was like growing up, literally not knowing if you were going to have a meal the next day. Um, clearly looking at me, we, we didn't, we got over all those problems. Um, but we never got to that point, but we got to the point where it was uncomfortable from time to time, uh, especially this one period that I was out of work for for quite some time and i tried the the uh stay at home dad role there and and wanted to see how that fit and uh came to the conclusion that it, that i'm not cut out for that type of thing yeah i do remember around that time mainly because i was almost grounded but you know we you, you were almost grounded <laughs> well i got in trouble at school but you know we won't talk about that mommy um i i would have to you know kind of piggyback with that we have been very fortunate knock on wood um you know for the time that we've been together and we've had our family that you know we there were just you know a few months where it was was a hiccup um for us and i don't think it was anything that you know, ever affected you in terms of things that you couldn't do or things that you couldn't have or, um, you know. Other than having to put up with me being home for an extended period of time. Right, because it I'm... was also during the summer, too. So instead of going to camp that one year, 
obviously that was the, well, there's no sense in sending her to camp. Let's, you know, you stay home and you guys, you know, go to the park and, and do things. And Yeah, and I remember that you would be able to pick me up uh, from school when that ended up starting. And, well, I didn't really like that at first because, you know, I got, like, in trouble two times. But, you know, we won't talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> so, yeah, so it, it was, again, very, we've been very fortunate and very blessed to have, you know, we, we didn't have to really modify too many things, you know, at that time. Going into the pandemic, you know, we've talked about this, you know, multiple times too, that, you know, Daddy and I both worked full time from the moment the pandemic started until now. Nothing ever changed for us where a lot of people didn't have that luxury. And it really was a luxury to be able to, um, you know, keep the lights on, keep the heat on, keep the air conditioner on, you know, all the bills got paid. And, you know, there were times when, you know, I worried that maybe something was going to happen with the pandemic. And we we were very fortunate, um, you know, so I, I, I totally feel for those parents out there who, you know, they don't know one week to the next how they're going to manage and they do you know in some cases they they do what they have to to make sure things go well for you know as well as can be in their situation for their family yeah i tend to agree i definitely think we are pretty fortunate knock on wood all right so the next question we have is do you think you've been able to to provide me with all my basic needs. Daddy? Yeah, I think you're fine. You're good. No, seriously. <laughs> okay. I, I think I think we've been in a position where we've been fortunate enough to not only meet but exceed those basic needs. Um, there's very few things that you need. There's very few things that you ask for. And the stuff that I do ask for, it's normally me paying for it. Usually. Usually. Sometimes. Once in a while. Um, but, you know, we've, we've been able to do things with you that a lot of families can't do. I mean, we've, you've been to Disney more times, I think, than pretty much most human beings out there that don't live in Florida. Okay? Some kids never get to go. Most kids get to go once in their lifetime. Twice, maybe. So, yeah, I think, I think, not to pat myself on the back, but I think we've done pretty good. Are we good? You don't, you have anything I felt on it? No, I, I, I think, you know, in, in some respects, you know, and we know that you're spoiled, but in a good way. You're not, you know, you don't expect to get the newest phone or the newest iPad or the newest whatever, you're happy if you get a hand-me-down of something. And, you know, so the way that we kind of reward you for being a good student and being a, a pretty great kid is if we feel, you know what, you do deserve a, an upgrade of, of some sort. And we give it to you and... You know, for the holidays, you wanted a purple hoodie. That was your big gift that you wanted. You didn't care about anything else where there are some kids that are like, I want the new blah, 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 or I want, you know, the new game system, and I want this. And you're just like, I just want leggings and a purple hoodie. And I'd be, and you were ecstatic that you had a purple hoodie. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> all of my gaming systems, I've never asked for them. I've never asked for the Switch. We have... I have a Switch. We never asked... I never asked for the PS5. I never asked for the Xboxes. We have those. Well, technically, well, I they're, have the well, PS5. They're well, technically, that's <laughs> yours. I don't really even use it anyway. <laughs> right. I don't even... I don't even use it that much anyway. Not, technically, I mainly just play with the older Xbox, because, you know, there's Rock Band on it. Yes. Yeah, if you had one game to play, you'd be, you know, all right, whatever, and that's and that's fine. And that's why it was so funny when you and, and Daddy started going to the gaming stores and looking, and you're like, there's all these games for Switch? 
how did I not know? And it was like your mind had l just like exploded because it was just you were happy playing one game or two games on it. And and that's fine. And and nothing wrong with that. So it's nice when daddy and I can spoil you in that respect because you appreciate it. You don't take it for granted. You don't try and and con us out of you know something the only thing you might con us out of is something at five below that's like three dollars like that's really when it comes down to it or yeah anything else you're like all right i'll i'll pay for it or there's a new sims pack or something and you know how much money you have and all right i'll pay for it that's fine yeah and like i have to ask you guys hey can we sort out my finances real quick right which normally means there's something i want to buy i want to make sure i have enough money for it <laughs> All right, uh, the next one we have is, are you happy with the conditions we live in, or do you wish things could be better? Mommy? I want a mansion, no. <laughs> a I, haunted mansion, maybe. A haunted mansion. Oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with, with where we are. Um, you know, could we always have a bigger house? Yeah, but then that would be more to clean. Could we you know live someplace warmer yeah then we have to deal with bugs you know i i i think i'm i don't need to have the biggest the newest um the best of of whatever because i have you yay both of you i'm the biggest <laughs> right i mean come on look at me <laughs> i'm the biggest you're the best you know we're good right right and mommy's the beauty. Right. Aw. There you go. See, the three Bs. We're instead of Bed Bath and Beyond. It's <laughs> well, biggest, going, best, and beautiful. They're going bankrupt. So we won't talk about <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to be them. <laughs> um, no, I agree. I, You know, you always want to provide a better life for your kids than you had yourself. Um, and I, I, I know from my perspective, we've accomplished that quite handily but you always want something that's better you know you want something to strive for and there's always something else that we could do something a different vacation we can do a bigger house a you know nicer bathroom a bigger fire pit whatever it is it doesn't have to be huge things but it's always something else to to look forward to and that kind of is what drives you it's like I don't want to be complacent and say, oh, I love my life and, and it's as great as it can be and I never want to change. Because at some point in time, it's going to change. And if you are if you don't prepare yourself for that and you don't prepare yourself in a way that kind of looks for that positive change, you get stuck in your ways and it changes in a way that you don't like and you're trying to adjust to it and stuff like that. So, yes, I'm happy with the conditions that we live in. But I wish things could be better. And we try to make things better. That's the big thing. It's not just wishing. I don't sit around wishing I hit the lottery, right? You know, we work harder. We work smarter. We save our money. We make the right decisions so that we can have things better. It's not just about sitting back and, and envying what the neighbor has or something like that. It's actively doing something. It's being motivated to do something to make it better. So that's that's my two cents. Yeah, I'd pretty much agree with everything, you know. Things could be better, but things are great as it is now. Uh, the final one for basic needs is, do you try to go the extra mile to help support your family's needs? Mommy? I think so. I... I hope I, I do. Uh, you know, uh, I, I hope you appreciate I'm... <laughs> you know everything that that we do that i do uh, could i do more probably could i do less sure i mean i can definitely appreciate especially the fact that you get up with me in the morning even if you don't have to get up that early mm -hmm. and you help me to make my lunch and occasionally help me remember to get my lunch <laughs> You're, like, up to drive me and, and like, wait for me with the bus. And occasionally you'll even pick me up if, you know, you 
uh, are able to. And, you know, I really appreciate that because otherwise I don't really know what I would do in the morning. Like, when you go and, like, I have to do my own lunch, I have to do my own stuff, it's like, what is this? So, Daddy feels the same way. (laughs) Indeed I do. I would say... I don't go the extra mile that I used to go because I, I live much closer to work now. <laughs> and I don't go the same extra miles that mommy goes. I think we go down different mile paths. Yes. All for the <laughs> same goal of trying to make things better. That's fair. Mommy and I have very different skill sets and we complement each other. And I think that's what makes things work so well around here. Uh, if I compliment mommy more, it probably would work better. Yes. I don't compliment mommy enough, (laughs) but I think we've each found a path for our own skill sets. I would tend to agree. Let's take a a quick break here, and then uh, we can come back and talk about some more stuff. All right. All right. We'll be right back. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. This is our first episode of Perspectives on Parenting, talking about the top challenges. And now we're going to talk about taking care of the mental and emotional needs, there being children. Just so that you know. (laughs) Don't want you to assume. Uh, So the first question for this section is, what do you do to make sure that my mental and emotional needs are looked after? Uh, Mostly neglect and ridicule, really. (laughs) Lots of chocolate. (laughs) Uh, This is one of the things. uh, You know, we started doing the podcast as a way of having these discussions and trying to help out with the various things that you run into. But there's a lot of talks. You know, we we tend to do a lot of dinnertime talks. We tend to do a lot of incident talks, we'll call them. And I, there's there's a lot of life lessons to pass on with stuff like that. But I think it's it's time. It's it's about taking the time to listen and to engage. And I think they're probably the biggest things that I do. And occasionally stopping and getting chocolate on the way home under certain circumstances. You know, that helps. Right. Uh, you know, I think we're we're very fortunate that we are so open with each other and that we can have serious conversations and we can have silly conversations about things but in the end it all kind of boils down to that we have that open communication and hopefully there's nothing that you are afraid to talk to us about or worried about and Yes, there are times when the emotions run wild and we try to to manage the situation as it comes because it, it it's happened from, you know, when you were younger and it's going to continue to happen. And hopefully we can give you enough life lessons and enough help so that, you know, 10 years from now, if something comes up and we're not nearby or can't get us on the phone you can go back you know and and kind of remember something go oh this is how my parents would have helped me out 
Okay, that's all fair. I definitely agree with all that. Uh, the next uh, question we have is, can this be a daunting task at time, and if so, how? You first. Absolutely not. It's been a pleasure the entire time. <laughs> it's never been... Lies! No, yeah. Liar! Uh, <laughs> Lies! As... As a man... <laughs> uh, That's always a great way to start a sentence. <laughs> it's, it's proven difficult uh, when we... <sighs> Just, when I when I've had to deal with the female element of raising a child, and and when I say that I mean the emotional roller coaster. It's very different than when Sam was growing up. I I can't. I I just I don't have words to really describe some of the challenges. Because there are times that you'll get emotional about something, and and I, I just I don't get it. But like I can't be like, I don't get it. Just get over it, like, because <laughs> I've tried that and it doesn't work. So it's amazing you're still alive after saying that. <laughs> it's one of those things where I have to, at the very least, try to understand the situation from your perspective. And then figure out a way to say something that's encouraging and uplifting and not demeaning or going to make the situation worse. And I'm very good at demeaning and and humor and stuff like that. I, I have a difficult time with the encouraging part of things sometimes when you when you have an emotional incident. That's fair. So. Mommy? Well, and I, and I want to give Daddy some props because not a lot of men can be as open-minded about certain situations with, with their daughters. And you probably know a whole lot more about things pertaining to your daughter than than most dads with daughters, honestly. So that that's you know kudos to you well, for you. not shying away or saying, oh, we'll talk to your mother. You know that's her department. There are, and and you know there's only so much knowledge that you have and knowledge that you can look up, but without having lived that you don't know but you do your best and you don't try and fake it you know you you admit when uh well, you know you, you ha have I'm, your faults i'm so. glad you recognize that i do and then if you bring chocolate then it makes everybody happy yep <laughs> it offsets some of those demeaning comments and, sometimes. and and trust me it's i can only because i'm still in it it's hard for me to even take a step back and go, why does he just not get it? You know, because I understand what she's going through and she understands what I'm going through because we're going through it the same time. So I can only imagine where you walk in the door. Is it safe? Do I need? Here, 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 here's a chocolate grenade. And then, you know, all there, the, there the are women. Times... And the women like crawl from the wall. <laughs> the women folks scurry to pick up the chocolate. There are times that I come home and I know what's going on, and right. I'm just like, "All right, yell at me, and I'll go downstairs, and okay. I'll use a loan at that point." Right, time. exactly. Just take take my beatings. There are, and... Right, there are times I just know I got to take one for the team for the for the greater good. I know in three days everything will be fine. <laughs> everything will go back to normal and it's just the way it's it's going to be and it's not a personal attack. It's right. just so, what happens. So So that's one example. <laughs> yes, the one example. <laughs> uh anyway, moving on to the next question. Would you say it's easier or harder to look after these needs than to take care of my basic ones? And if so, why? Mommy? <sighs> I don't know. I guess 
some pe- some people are meant to be parents and i i guess for m- for me i don't see it as a challenge i don't see it as a hardship i don't i kind of knew what i was signing up for i i did it willingly i wanted it where i know that there are people that end up being parents because of other situations and and have to kind of grow into it and some people are just parenting types um you know you're a very motherly individual um when you're with your group of friends you're kind of the mom of the group making hey does every you know if your guys are sitting outside and it's you know cold out hey does anybody need a blanket does that you know does anybody need a snack does anybody need a drink you take care of your your little group of of, of friends um so again some people have that kind of built into them no matter if they're a parent or not there are some people that never become parents but still have that in them and then there are people that become parents that never had it in them and unfortunately their kids kind of suffer because they didn't have that nurturing environment so I think for me it it's just in some cases second nature obviously there are things that happen on the day-to-day basis where I'm like oh this isn't what I signed up for but okay how are we dealing with this today and but for the most part I try and keep as cool and calm collective sometimes and and okay what do we need to do to get past this what what's the lesson here so that the next time we don't have a freak out uh were you gonna say anything on that nope no i'm not even gonna touch that one (laughs) all right uh good enough uh the next question we have is do you wish you were better at dealing with these needs than you are now i guess we can start on you for that one why because it seems like i need to be better at dealing with these things i don't know i think it's just because you didn't say anything on the other one um yes i and i and i i try to get better i try to be more patient i try to be more understanding but you know, like mommy said, there's only so much that I can understand, right? I don't have the same physiology, we'll say. So there are things that you go through that I could never go through. And I, you can only get so much out of hearing someone talk about it and reading about it that I'll never really understand these things. What I try to understand is what my role is in helping to cope with these things. Is that role being that guy that gets yelled at because someone needs to get their frustrations out? All right, I can I can take the punches and deal with that. Is that role the guy who stops and gets chocolate on the way home? Okay, I can I can handle that too. You know, so it's a matter of figuring out where I can constructively fit into the equation knowing I can't fill the gap. So that's where I, I try to get better at those things. And it's a learning experience. It, it comes with time. It comes with trial and error. Mommy, do you want to say anything? No, I think I'm good. All right. The next question we have is what do you think can be changed that could improve the condition of these needs more? Mommy? See, I don't know if we, not to toot our own horn, but I I think we have opened that line of communication where, as far as I know, you don't have an issue coming to us about things. There were certain topics not that long ago that you didn't feel comfortable going to daddy with and you, you came to me and we talk them through and and then 
I was able to to talk to daddy about them and kind of prepare him. And that was definitely a, a little bit of a bumpy situation. But since then, the the lines of communication have been pretty open about it. And it, it, it was a learning curve for, for all of us. So I think anything that comes our way, we all kind of all right what what do we need to do for for this and and we've had a couple of different situations that have popped up more recently where you were afraid to talk to me about something and you you talked to your guidance counselor about it and your guidance counselor said oh, if that's the way you feel that's the way you feel and you and daddy had the conversation and you didn't want to bring it up to me because you figured I'd be upset and yeah, I was upset, but I understood your reasoning behind it and made sense and said, all right, well, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do and we will support you. Same thing with, you know, another topic where not that we wanted to push you towards something, but you kind of made a decision on something and we kind of agree. Yeah, okay, that's that's the way it's going to be. So I, I think... Even though we still have these situations that come up where, all right, well, I don't want to tell daddy, I'll tell mommy. Or I don't want to tell mommy, I'll tell daddy. At least there's somebody that you feel comfortable talking to. And, I, and there are lots of kids out there who can't talk to their parents about anything. And they don't have a guidance counselor at school that they're able to talk to or they don't have a family friend or somebody and it eats them up and it in some cases destroys who that person is so again i i think we're very fortunate that we've been so open and understanding with you from the beginning that when these little kind of hiccups happen they're just little bumps in the road they're just little pebbles you know, in the sand. They're not these huge mountains that we can't overcome. Anything? Uh, she went to the mountain analogy. I can't really, <laughs> can't really top that. Well, I mean, it's a mountain, so yeah. You know, if, I'm just that good. <laughs> what can be changed to improve? The only thing I could say is, you know, a subscription to the Chocolate of the Week Club or something. <laughs> okay. I like that. I, I got nothing there. <laughs> All right, the next question we have is, do you feel looking after these needs are just as, if not more important than taking care of my basic needs? You first. Me or, being daddy. Yes. I think they're more important. I think the basic needs are the ones that kind of cover themselves. I think all of what we've been talking about here is the important stuff because these are the formative things. Yes, you need food. Yes, you need a roof over your head and you know clothes and all that stuff. But what makes you who you are when you're an adult is everything else. You know, those experiences. Where do you get your sense of compassion? Where do you get your sense of empathy? Where do you get your sense of morals? Those are all the things that these other things are instilling in you. So I definitely think that these are really where you need to be focusing on the most important things. Because if you're focusing on those things, chances are you've taken care of the basics. Fair enough. Mommy? Yeah, I, w I would have to agree with, with that. Don't think I really have anything. No, I didn't, you're not going to pull another mountain analogy out on me? No? Okay. Mommy's not going to the mountain again. <laughs> All right. I'm saving it for later. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question we ha have is, have you ever thought that I needed counseling to better help these needs? Mommy? Um, possibly. I, I, I am not one who thinks that those that need help are weak or uh, can't do their day-to-day -day life or that it's something to look down upon. 
I think if there's something that you can't get the help from those around you and you're still struggling in some sort of way, that absolutely you should go and find support elsewhere. So it, it, it's really up to the, the person. You know, it, you have to be the one to want the help. People can suggest it and say, yeah, I think maybe you, you, you should. Or, you know, but if you aren't ready to go for help, then going and talking to somebody, you're not going to get anything out of it for anybody in general. So, but to to be able to admit to yourself, you know what? I think I need a little extra work to to help. I think that there's nothing wrong with that. There was a time in the not too distant future that I probably would have said, no, you don't need that. My perspectives on counseling and professional help have evolved over the years. And I, not being a professional or a qualified professional, I can't say that you need counseling. I will say that it doesn't hurt. You know, there are times, and it depends on the person you talk to as well. There are counselors that are very in tune with your thoughts and feelings and needs, and they're very helpful. They're the, the, the type of people that can, that can read you well and can unlock the parts of you that need to be unlocked and let loose. There are other counselors who aren't like that, who aren't very good, who are... I don't want to say conventional or unconventional, but there are people who do it by the book and the book was written as a guide. It wasn't written for everybody. So somebody who who's adaptable and can understand your needs probably could do wonderful things for you. Um, but like mommy said, you have to be ready for something like that. You have to one, not stigmatize it yourself because there's absolutely nothing wrong with talking to a counselor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with that. So you can't stigmatize it because then you're going to look down on it yourself. And you have to be willing to unlock those parts of you. You know, there are times that a lot of the issues that we have, and this was, you know, part of my experience with counseling was there were parts of my past that, I locked up and threw away the key because I didn't want to deal with them because it was too painful to deal with. The problem is, is that you're lugging this chest around, this very heavy chest, and it weighs you down emotionally, and, and it's an impairment to you until you deal with it. You know, you can either cut it loose or you can open it up and deal with it. And you have to be prepared to deal with it sometimes. And... In my experience, I found that when you deal with it and you come to terms with it and you accept it, you can move on and it's part of you at that point in time. You're not trying to run away from it and you can embrace it and understand it. And in my case, it was about forgiveness. And until you're ready to forgive yourself in those situations, going to a counselor is not going to matter to you at all. So it, you know, it's like chicken soup. It might not help, but it won't hurt, right? Fair enough. All right, those are some very deep responses. Thank you. Uh, the final question for this section is, would you say that what you've done for these needs has helped me from what you can, from what you, uh, from what you can see? Mommy? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I I can see that you know, what we've talked about in general has has affected you uh, with the way that you act, with the way that you think, with the way that you you do certain things. Um, so I again, not to you know pat ourselves on the back, but I think we raised a 
pretty decent kid. You you you're a pretty decent human being. Um, you know, there there's nothing that you do that disappoints us. <laughs> Our little burden. And that's an inside joke. That's, you know, that's that we joke about it, you know, where unfortunately there are parents that yell at their kids and say that they're burdens and they're disappointments and they mean it. And yeah, we might get upset that you didn't do a chore or something. When was the last time you were grounded for for something? What time is it? <laughs> Still early, right? <laughs> I'm sure we can find something. But we trust you because we have, uh, you know, um, you've never done anything for us to f not trust you. You've never done anything. You know, the night's still young. Who knows? Uh you might sneak out, but you don't want to. You don't want to go outside. It's cold. You know, I think you'd want to go outside and play with a cat. That would really be the only... <laughs> yeah, it's not like I have a social life. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to take another break and uh, come back and finish up? Uh, sure. All right. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news will give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're doing Perspectives on Parenting Top Challenges. And now we're going to talk about ensuring children receive a quality education. So the first question we have in this section is, has it been difficult trying to get me into school at this point? We will go to you, Daddy. No, it hasn't. <laughs> ne next question, then? Next question. All right, um... Uh, next question we have is, do you have any experiences with this as a parent that might seem like a more unique situation than most? Mommy? Well, fortunately, you're in the public school system. We didn't decide to send you to a private school. Uh, we felt that the school district that for the town that we live in, that there weren't any issues um, where, again, not every parent has that opportunity or feels that a public education is sufficient for their child. So then they do go above and beyond and look for a private school. Um, we haven't started looking at colleges yet. That'll be next year's big fun activity. Uh, so I'm sure that will be uh, a new set of challenges uh, for us. But as of right now, we've been very fortunate with doing, you know, what you're doing now with the the engineering program and, and things like that. That was all you getting into it. So there was nothing that we had to, to really worry about. The only thing we kind of worried about was at the start of the pandemic, what was school going to be like? Did we have to start homeschooling you? That was really, I think, the only time we ever really worried about what are we going to do for school do i have to now be a homeschooling teacher do we have to find a homeschooling group what you know what online programs can we do and that was probably the the biggest challenge that's fair 
Um, the next question we have is, have you ever thought of enrolling me in different schools? Daddy? Um, not seriously, other than the time that, that mommy mentioned with the COVID stuff. Um, but every time I go and look for a different house, I always look at the school district and, you know, I consider whether or not we want to pull you out and, and move to a different school district. And then mommy's little voice in the back of my head just sort of smacks me in the back of my head. <laughs> All right, we won't look at that house anymore. So, so, no, I don't think there's ever been any real serious consideration except for the COVID experience. All right, that's fair. Uh, next up is, ha is uh, do you have any expect? No, sorry. Next question is, do you have expectations for when a college approaches and what are they? Mommy? Hmm. I, I think it's... Um... You know, is it something that a school that you want to go to? It, it's ultimately your choice by by then. Uh, you know, do you feel comfortable at the school? Does it, you know, do, do you feel excited by it? Does it have what you're looking for? Is it far enough from home? Is it close enough from home? It's, you know, what are your... Criteria, and I think right now it's a little early for you to really know what it is. So it's again, it's where you're gonna end up for hopefully four years. But also, it's one of those things where you might end up someplace and absolutely hate it after the first year and decide to to go someplace else. And again, by then, it's your choice. Daddy and I need to be there to to support you with that decision so again it, it really it's going to come down to you where where you want to go yeah i love getting pressure put on me that's fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh <clears throat> next question we have is have you ever had to get involved with something i was dealing with at school i definitely think this is a good question for you father hmm. 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 um there have been a few instances in which there were issues that you had in school and I had to express my displeasure at the situation. Uh, the first one, that the biggest one I think that comes to mind uh, was an incident where you had a teacher who was making fun of one of your phobias. Well, let's just say he didn't after I had a conversation with him. Um, I've never had a problem uh, exercising my uh, right to free speech when it comes to situations with your school that I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but I've never had a problem with that with just about anything. Getting me to engage is not difficult. Getting me to shut up, now that's a challenge. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Polite way of saying that. Uh, next question we have is, do you think you've helped to influence my work ethic in school? Mommy, this is for you. I believe so. I think in some cases you have a better work ethic than Daddy or I had. Oh, definitely me. <laughs> I was a slacker. Um. You know, on a Friday afternoon, you come home and do homework where most people are like, eh, I got all weekend, whatever. Or you did homework on a Friday when you had off on Monday just so that you could get it done and then you could relax. Um, same thing when you get home from school. You come home, you relax for a couple of minutes, and then you take out your books and you, you start doing it. Even then, I don't even relax. I kind of just... Drop all my stuff in the kitchen, take off my shoes, call you, and then do homework. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm saying is that that you instilled that kind of all on your own. That wasn't really anything that we ever talked about. And I don't know if that was kind of due to doing, like, aftercare. Yeah, that might be the reason because it's like that they got us to do our homework, like, at the very start. That probably might have been the reason why I did that. Yeah, and it's a good work habit to, to have. So no no complaints there. 
All right. Uh, the next question we have is: Have you ever had any major expectations for me when it came to school activities or my performance, Daddy? I think every parent has an expectation. I think my expectations for you, regardless of what it was, whether it was scholastic, whether it was marching band, or even the clubs that you're in, it's to do your best. Always do your best. Sometimes your best doesn't get you an A, but if you're doing your best, that's all I can ask for. I have no right to ask for anything more than you to try your best. Don't go in there and, and do it half-heartedly. Don't try and coast through. Do your best every time because if you adhere to that ethic, when you get done school and get done college and you're out in the real world and you're working in your professional career, that same philosophy will pay off in the long run. So my expectation is always try your best. All right. I agree with that. Or at least I agree with that that's your expectation. But well, you don't agree with that philosophy. No, I agree with the philosophy. It's uh, whatever. Uh, the last question we have for you, Mommy, is what do you think the future holds in terms of my education? Let me get my crystal ball. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's where do you want it to go? That's really the the most that I can hope for. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping you're planning to go to college at this point. I, I believe you are on that track. Do you go to school for engineering? We don't know yet. It's still early to, to make that decision. You have to do what's best for you. Not because daddy wants you to do it. Not because I want you to do it. Because you want to do it. And yeah, uh, there were things that we made you do when you were younger that as you get older, you don't have to do what we want you to do because you are your own person. And that's where I'm having issues because I'm trying to guide you to certain things. And you're like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. And it's like, but, 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 but. Chicken butt. Chicken, <laughs> chicken butt. Um, but I have to realize, not to hit my microphone, that you're an individual and you're going to do what you want to do. Just because I love the Haunted Mansion doesn't mean you have to love the Haunted Mansion. Despite the fact that I've been really interested in the lore recently. No right, which is totally fine. Reason. And you love Spongebob, where there was a conversation not that long ago where, oh, she's going to grow out of that phase. And it's like, well, no. For how long have you liked Darth Vader? Oh, ever since you were a kid. Okay, well, maybe she's going to like Spongebob. Not to name any names. I'm not naming names. names. <laughs> I'm not naming. Hey, look, you want to back that bus up <laughs> over me again? Where's that beer truck? <laughs> but that that's that's the thing is that we can, you know, we've guided you for for as long as we can and hopefully we will guide you longer, but at some point you have to take the reins and you have to make that decision and it's and hopefully we give you enough knowledge and enough confidence to make those right decisions Alrighty, i think we have a solid discussion may okay. have been a little long but solid discussion that's fine it was worthwhile yep could have been longer all right uh when we come back uh i guess i'm still do are we still am i still doing the you know thing at the end or are we just uh yeah yeah let's see how bad you murder that one uh <laughs> We'll be right back. Great. Did you want to do your, your closing thoughts? I mean, sure. Okay, do that, then we come back. Ready? Here we go. All right, so despite the fact that we didn't have a general theme when it came to all of this, I guess what I can at least say is uh, try your best to keep open communication with each other. That's That's really something that we've really been fortunate about, and that's one of the reasons we're able to have this podcast with each other and 
I know it's obviously not going to be the case for everybody, but if you have the ability, try to keep an open communication with your parents or your kids. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't really have too much else to say, and I guess I'm doing the show plugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so... For audio versions of the podcast, they are listed as Insights and Teens. We also have video versions of the podcast that are listed as Insights and the Things. You can find our podcast on all popular podcast services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and, you know, much more. Any place you can get a podcast, really. Uh, you can email us at comments at insightsandthings.com. We're on Twitter at Twitter at insights and the uh, at insights underscore things you can find us on facebook at facebook.com slash insights and the things podcast we're on instagram and instagram.com slash insights and the things or you can find all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsandthethings.com and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts insights and entertain insights into entertainment hosted normally by you and mommy and insights into tomorrow are not really monthly podcast that's really only filmed almost once a year at this point, <laughs> hosted by you and my brother Sam McKay. Okay, well, we clearly have to work on your marketing skills. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, maybe that it, that's what gets people actually interested in the ad. They don't just want a regular read through. They actually would like personality when I came to it. Well, you never there know. There you go. That's there you go. Look at. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, bye. Thank you.